Hello guys, Oscar Hotel 8, Sierra Tango November, Julian here for Off Grid Ham Radio. Today's topic is e-bikes, and although it's a little bit off topic, I promise it'll line up and come together by the end of the video. Now many of us are using e-bikes or electric bicycles for a plethora of things, survival, camping, commuting to work, or even portable ham radio expeditions. Now, you may not have known it previously, but my electric fat bike is an important part of this channel. So, I thought I would share with you my off-grid charging strategy at home and in the field. Now, this post augments a blog post I wrote on the Powerfilm Solar website a couple of years ago. I'm sure you'll find it interesting, so stick with me and I'll tell you all about it. Alright guys, let's go. You are listening to the emergency broadcast systems. This station broadcast emergency news and official information on the air for a sign area. What you're looking at here is my indoor charge controller for my electric fat bike. I will get to the fat bike in a second, but I wanted to tell you I'm actually charging my electric fat bike off grid with solar power each and every day, and I have been for quite some time. Now this is one of two batteries I have for my electric fat bike. I keep one on the fat bike, which is charged up and ready to go, and I keep the other one here inside the ham shack, charged up by 80 watts of solar panels on the tower, and maintained by this Guinnessan boost charge controller. Now people are often asking what's the point of an electric bicycle or in my case an electric fat bike and of course for me primarily it's my daily driver I also use it for my ham radio expeditions for camping for going to the store for little things or for just uh, going out to have some fresh air with my dog now as you can see the bike is capable of carrying enough gear for myself and my dog for three to five days off grid I've got the saddlebags, I've got a top box, I've got my pannier racks and panniers, uh, everything I need to keep the bike up and running and to carry the food, the camping gear, my sleeping bag, my hammock, my tarp, everything I need to bug out or get off grid as I like. My fat bike is from a company called GZR, Golf Zulu Romeo. It's a mid-drive bike with a 250-watt motor. Mid-drive means that the motor's in the center of the bike connected to the crank, unlike other bikes where they have a motor in the hub of the front or rear wheel. This mid-drive bike is actually a lot smoother. Uh, it allows you to remove your wheels uh, like any other bike. There's no hub motor or anything like that to get in the way of taking the wheels off or making tire changes more complicated. It's actually quite nice and simple. It's also got something called uh, pedal assist, which means that, uh, well, first of all, it's not going to go unless you pedal it, but uh, you can adjust how much it's going to assist you when you pedal from a level of, uh, for example, one to five. Now, in addition to those assist levels one through five, you can also disable the assist entirely. This makes the bike operate just the same like a manually pedaled bicycle. This is excellent when the battery dies or if you want to save the battery and just get yourself a workout. Either way, the bicycle doesn't become completely useless without a fully charged battery. Now in regards to charging, it's easier at 65 degrees north to have two batteries. That's because we don't have a lot of sunlight here at certain parts of the year. So while I'm discharging one battery on the bike, I can keep one battery or top up the other battery, the second battery at home, with the solar panel that's up on the tower. That's the weakest one I have, so uh, I just use it for charging up the e-bike. It works pretty well. I don't have a second charge controller yet, but I'm going to order one pretty soon. That second charge controller will allow me to top up the working battery, the battery that's actually on the bike when I'm out in the field. This will give me extended range and allow me to go much further with the uh, with the working battery than I would uh, if I just used it until I depleted it and then started riding the bike as a normal bicycle. 
Now the whole point of that battery and the pedal assist on the bike is to help you go further without burning as many calories. So that solar panel charge controller and being able to charge that extra battery or the battery, the working battery on the bike actually helps to reduce your caloric consumption for the amount of miles or kilometers you're going to put on the bike. So this is what my fat bike looks like when it's charged in the field. I've got my solar panel. I've got my bicycle. I've got the charge controller. Of course, I've got cables between the charge controller and the bike and the charge controller and the solar panel. The battery remains attached to the bike. That's it. It's all relatively simple. All right, guys, let's take a look at all of our charging components. I like to keep everything in my top box. Not always this neat, but <laughs> I set this up just for you all. Okay, there's just a couple of components. And naturally, we have the solar panel, and I'm using the power film crystalline, 160 watt crystalline panel. I've got the Guinness on GV boost controller for my 48 volt battery, but remember it's a nominal voltage. So choose the correct Guinness on charge controller for your e-bike battery. Now, in addition to the solar panel and charge controller, I've got a cable that goes from the charge controller to the solar panel. And I've got another cable uh, which goes to the, from the charge controller to the e-bike battery. Now the actual battery for this bike at the moment is on the bike. I can leave it on the bike if I like so that I can charge it up there. Or like I showed you earlier, I can charge this battery or a second battery off of the bike as well. The only thing to remember is that, that we shouldn't charge the battery while the bike is in use. Now, just to make it easier to make this video, I've attached the charge controller to the bike frame with a couple of zip ties. The charge controller has two different wires coming out of it. I've attached Anderson power poles to mine to make it easier to connect things up. One of the cables coming out goes to the solar panel and the other cable attaches to the bike battery. So when you're charging your bicycle, we'll look like this. You have your solar panel on the ground or wherever you've laid it out. You have your charge controller. You have your cabling and your battery. All right, now you can see that fast pulsing, which means we're getting a charge from our solar panel. And this is actually quite astonishing. It says something about the charge controller, but it also says something about the solar panels that we're using. And it's one of the reasons that I've continuously used power film solar panels in my adventures. So we have a relatively gray day. It's autumn already here in Finland, at 65 degrees north, but we're still getting a charge. Not bad. Now, in regards to preparedness and the portable ham radio adventures you often see on the channel, there's a few practical benefits to the electric fat bike. Firstly, you can carry a much greater load. Secondly, you can carry a greater load without expending a massive amount of calories. This is huge. Third, being able to solar power your electric fat bike or electric bike in the field means that uh, you don't have to go searching for a plug or carry some means of charging it with you. You have a lightweight solar panel, you've got a charge controller, a couple of cables, and you're all set. That's about as good as it gets in regards to self-reliance. Now, over the years, you've seen me deploying on foot, hiking with Snapper. You've seen me on the fat bike from time to time. More recently, you've seen me in the Subaru Outback or in the off-grid camper caravan. But if you'd like to see more electric fat bike adventures on the channel, especially these portable ham radio adventures, let me know in the comments. It would be incredible to get the feedback from you all. All right, guys, just a few things before we get going. 
I left a few links for you in the description. One of them is the blog post I told you about earlier in this video. It's on the PowerFilm website. I also left a link for you on oh8stn.org, which also talks about electric bikes and how I use them for portable ham radio adventures. Finally, I left links to a couple of videos where I've deployed with the electric fat bike for ham radio expeditions. If you're already using an electric fat bike or you're considering using one, please let me know how you plan on using it or how you are using them in the comments. All right, guys, if you like what I'm doing, if you like the content I'm sharing, please let me know by leaving me a comment, a thumbs up, or even a super thanks, which always helps. And if it's not too much to ask, please share this video with someone or somewhere where other operators might enjoy it. Rock and roll, guys. You are all absolutely awesome. Thanks for watching. All right, guys. Until next time. Ciao.